let's start doing this packet tracer activity. Now I recommend going through the steps that I've outlined because it made sense to me. Of course, you can do them in any order you want, but I recommend the outline steps. So in step one, use the address information in the topology diagram to configure the web server, the DNS server, and PC admin. So if we look down here, PC admin, the web server, and the DNS server all need static IP address configuration. So we'll start, let's say, with the web server right here. So we'll open up the web server, desktop, desktop configuration, and we can bring this back up here. And the IP address is 192.168.35.2. All right, we do a quick double check of our configurations and we're done with the web server. The DNS server, we'll open that up. And for the DNS server address, we'll just use 127.0.0.1 since this is a DNS server. And in its DNS server configurations, it has the information on how to contact, let's say, root DNS servers on the internet or something like that. Um, also, this is just packet tracers. So these are the configurations that I recommend for the DNS server. And the PC admin computer, we'll open that up. And you can see the, the address is also listed right here down below. PC admin computer is host number 10 on the 88 network. It's in the 88 VLAN. And the DNS server information. Okay, and we're done with step one. Now, PC1 and PC2 are going to be getting their IP address information from a DHCP server, which we're going to set up on R1 and PC4 is going to be getting its IP addressing information IPv6 from the router R3 and the DHCP version 6 server that we're going to also set up on R3. But before we do that, we should probably set up the switches and that was the idea I had for step 2. So I'm going to scroll up to step 2 and we're going to go to step 2. So in step 2, using the information in the topology diagram, configure S1, S2, and S3 with the following initial settings. Host name, VLANs and VLAN names, trunks, and these are the allowed VLANs that are going to be on the trunk links. We're also going to need to set up the native VLAN. And then access switch ports with the VLAN. So the switch ports that each PC is connected to, we need to configure those as access switch ports. And then we're going to shut down the unused switch ports. And then we need to also set up the management interface VLAN 88 with an IP address. So we're going to create a switched virtual interface for interface VLAN 88. And we're going to give it the IP address. And you can find the IP address, let's see here, right here. Switch 1 interface VLAN 88, 192.168.88.11. So switch 1 will be .11 switch 2 will be dot 12 and switch 3 will be dot 13 and then use the planned r1 address of 192.168.88.1 as the default gateway we're also going to set the default gateway on our switches and we're going to use the default gateway address 192.168.88.1 which we will be configuring on r1 so let's get started we'll open up s1 here and I'll drag this open a little bit. Type en for enable, conf t to get to global config, and I'll put in the host name s1. Next, let's configure our VLANs. So we'll say VLAN 15, and that takes us into VLAN configuration mode, and then the name, which is sales with a capital S, and then VLAN 25, name research, VLAN 35, name servers, 
VLAN 88 name management MGT VLAN 98 name native. So we'll make the native VLAN VLAN 98 or management VLAN VLAN 88 and then we have three VLANs for our hosts on our network. All right, we'll hit enter and now we have the VLANs configured. Let's see what's next on the list. So once we've done that, we need to set up our access switch ports with the VLANs. So on S1, we're going to configure port 5 for PC1, so it's on the green VLAN, VLAN 15. So we need to put switch port 5 on VLAN 15. Let's do that first. So I'll do exit, get back to global config mode, interface F0 slash 5. SW, hit the tab key on the keyboard, switch port mode access, switches it to an access switch port, and then SW tab switch port access VLAN 15. Okay, now switch port 5 is in VLAN 15, and we need to also set up our trunks. If we look at the diagram here, we can see that we're using gigabit 1 slash 1 as one of our trunk interfaces and gigabit 1 slash 2 as the other trunk interface. So what we'll do is we'll say interface G 1 slash 1 and then SW tab switch port mode trunk SW tab switch port trunk allowed VLAN 15 comma 25 comma 35 comma 88 comma 98 so that allows our VLANs and then SW tab switch port trunk native VLAN 98 now as soon as we do this we're gonna start seeing some errors because by default the switches have the native VLAN set to VLAN 1 and if you have switch 1 with uh, native VLAN VLAN 1 and switch 2 has native VLAN VLAN uh, or switch 1 has a native VLAN VLAN 98 and switch 2 has VLAN 1 there's gonna be a VLAN a native VLAN mismatch and so we might see some errors until we get all three switches configured but that's not a big deal so now I'm gonna do an up arrow and go to interface gigabit 1 slash 2 and go switch port mode trunk which is up arrow just to get there and then switch port trunk allowed and then my VLANs and then switch port trunk native VLAN 98 so now we have our trunks configured and our switch port for fast ethernet 5 which are the three switch ports that we're using right now in switch port 1 now what we need to do is we need to shut down all of our other switch ports. Okay, I stepped away for a second. You can see the native VLAN mismatch happening between switch 1 and 2 because of changing the native VLAN to 98 and switch 2 still has it set to um, VLAN 1. So what we need to do now is shut down all of our unused switch ports. So we'll go interface range F0 slash 1 through 4 comma and let me back out of that because we're still getting that message. F, so interface range, I just want you to be able to see it. 0 slash 1 through 4, comma, F0 slash 6 through 24. And this will let us configure switch ports 1 through 4 and 6 through 24. You can see now we're in interface range configuration mode. And we can just say shut to shut down all of those interfaces. I'll type exit and now all we need to do is set up the uh, management or the uh, the interface VLAN IP address on the switch. And we already know that if we look to S1 here interface VLAN 88 and 88.11. So let's set that up right now. So we'll say interface VLAN 88 once again, I'm getting that message, but I don't like to see it so you can see the full command here. Interface VLAN 88. And now that interface is up. It's a switched virtual interface 
for the VLAN 88. IP address 192.168.88.11. And that was the number that we chose. And then 255.255.255.0. Dot zero is the subnet mask, so that puts the address on the interface. You can see that the interface is already up, so we don't need to bring it up with a no shut command. What I do need to do, though, however, is exit back to global config mode and set the default gateway. Default, I'll hit the tab key on the keyboard to finish the command, and 192.168.88.1. All right, you can see that was the command I put in, 88.1. So now I'll do a control C on my keyboard to get back to uh, privileged user mode, save my configuration, and then look at the configuration briefly. You can see we set the host name. You can see these ports are shut down. Port five, port five is in VLAN 15 and it's an access port. Everything else should be shut down except down here at the bottom our two gigabit interfaces are trunks with the native VLAN of 98 the trunks that are allowed 15, 25, 35, 88, 98 and you can see their trunks we don't have an IP address on the switched virtual interface for VLAN 1 we've created one for interface VLAN 88 and given it the proper IP address and the default gateway and that's it for our configurations for the switch if we look, double check the instructions, you can see that we've covered all of the instructions. Now we need to repeat this process for S2 and S3.